I knew from there, I was like, you bastard. Hello everyone, welcome in. My name is Kai Zamit. I'm a director, cinematographer and writer based in the south of the UK. And today in this video, we're gonna be checking out another Star Wars, the Old Republic cinematic. And this one's called Sacrifice. Like them all, first we're gonna watch it, give you my reaction. Then afterwards, that is where I break it down as a filmmaker. And if you're enjoying these type of videos, me giving my reactions and breakdowns, consider giving the video a like as it really does help out the channel with the whole YouTube algorithm. But mainly it tells me that you're enjoying it and the franchises that I'm covering, which means I'll make you some more. Right then, so with all that said and done, let's go, shall we? Play the tape. But first, before we get into it, I've got to talk about this game I've been playing and from one sci-fi geek to another. And don't lie, you're watching this video. I know you are, right? Own it. I've been playing and loving Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is an award-winning MMO free-to-play game set in an ever-expanding Star Trek universe. As a star-based commander on the edge of civilized space, recruit iconic characters from the next generation, the original series, the J.J. Abraham films, Strange New Worlds, and more, including Kirk, Spock, Data and my boy, Geordie. It's not only the characters, it's the ships too. The USS Enterprise, the Romulan Warbird, the Klingon Bird of Prey. Over 50 years of Star Trek goodness with this game and I am absolutely loving it. I really am. The open world in the game offers a vast and diverse space landscape from Alpha to Omega Quadrants, inviting us, the players, to explore freely. Put simply, you customise your fleet and crew to dominate the galaxy. You build powerful ships. You get to experience the entire Star Trek universe with all your favourite franchises. And let's be real next generation join millions of players forge alliances defeat enemies and conquer territories choose your faction and explore new worlds on intergalactic missions the game is completely free as i said earlier it has cross play so you can play on desktop and mobile i personally play it more on pc but that's just a personal choice and every month new events and content are being added to the game and speaking of, the latest update has brought in the Mirror Universe as well as two new Enterprise officers, Epic Officer Mirror Picard and Rare Officer Mirror Borg Data. Not only that, Starfleet is rolling out the red carpet for new players with daily welcome gifts. Epic Romulan Officer Nero can be unlocked after seven days of playing. So join me in the stars and let's take out some boss ships together, all right? And to give you a light speed head start, let's get you some goodies. First, click the link down below or scan my QR code on screen to get the game. Right, in game, go to your player profile, left top corner, open settings choose general and scroll down to sign up for your scopely account visit the official website so that's star trek fleet command.com click the redeem code on the left hand side log in with your scopely account and enter boost to redeem your rewards once successfully redeemed rewards will be visible when you return to the game just make sure you redeem before reaching level 10 in game all right boys have some fun starfleet out oh that's a powerful a opening shot can have anything Oh, we're not following Malgus. Willing to sacrifice. With your birth comes a solemn vow. We're shattering. You will have nothing. Oh, mate, this is gorgeous. Your privilege is the dirt. Oh shit. Are they like using simple signs here with like black gee and white gee? Oh, he's not happy now. In the darkness. Only ambition. Oh, and he took his head off. Guide you. Love the colour. The oath you swear. The promises you make. They are yours. Mate, he ain't even looking at them. I wonder why they, they're clearly going to turn dark, aren't they? Or go to the dark side. Your oh. Who are these? Oh, maybe they... Your birthright. The losses you suffer. Are they Sith? I think he's showing anger, isn't he? Dude, the lighting on this, the texture. Your entitlement. Fucking hell. The pain you endure. Oh, dude. This is it. I'm not gonna. Oh, she's like a Darth Maul type. And when dark wow. Finds you. Oh, is he gonna keep his. I thought he was going to kill his fucking brother then. Alone. 
some reason I saw the black outfit and thought, and thought it was his brother. The quality of this cinematic is really up there, isn't it? The other ones are great. Who are these guys? Who are these generals? These general Jedi. Look at this beautiful colour palette. Nice clean whites. Oh, they're like hunters. Oh, he's going to flip his lid. That close-up was telling me. Oh, mate. He's waiting for it. Oh, the fucking... Oh, shit. Mate, he fucking, his eyes went different colours, didn't they? You watch the other, the father will congratulate him. He probably only wanted the one. Wow. Mate, what a fucking... That stare. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to lie, I think that was my favourite one. Out of the ones that I've seen, I've really enjoyed them. But that was a short four minute film. And I've been introduced to new characters, places, I understood how fucking bad arse they were. Short films are so difficult to draw you in. And I'm like, who are they? I want to be them, I want to play them, I want to fight by their side. That was a banging cinematic Wow. Let's break it down. As I said, I absolutely loved this one. I just felt that it's for such a short story, it was so powerful. And it actually, from that trailer alone, or cinematic should we say, I would watch an actual movie with those characters. Again, obviously there was no voice dialogue when it came to those twins. But the world building and the character design and just... You could feel it, you, do you know what I mean? It was just perfect. As I said, it would make me want to go and spend some cash to go to the cinema. Let's break it down. Immediately, got a nice intro tone, the characters dollying in. A man can have what I loved about it, I was about to say the voiceover then kicked in, but it didn't did it till afterwards. Look at this overhead lighting, yeah? With this background, he looks so powerful, this blue light. A man can have and this holding on, do you know I mean? a man. When they're talking about a man and the voiceover, they deliberately showed him why. Anything. And they're just foreshadowing bits to come. I knew something was going to happen. I just wasn't expecting this. Not, not immediately. Well, I did after I watched it, but not at the beginning. If he is willing to sacrifice. And again, I didn't even notice this guy properly because of all this. I just thought it was armour or something. I never even in years thought it was one of the twins and I completely forgot. But yeah, going into it, beautiful. Look, the way they're doing these so, slow fades. The sound effects, diegetic sound. The camera shaking. And then look, we had this beautiful match cut, didn't we? Yeah, of this character. I was like, oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just great. You're using the kinetic energy of the visuals to tell you what is going on with the sound effects. Flash to white. And then silence. That silence is almost like a little calibration for you. It's like a little reset, like, <sighs> calm down. We know this is yet to come. And the fact that they pre-framed the story, or they framed narrative the story, yeah, so we're getting our story beginning and end, and then we're going to see all the, all the stuff that's happening in the middle. It's a four-minute video. Like they, did, they did a really good job. With your birth comes a solemn vow. But it's interesting, though, looking at that character... I immediately knew that he was a cold-hearted bastard. I mean, let's go back five. He doesn't smile. With your birth. Just everything about him. Yeah? See that little blink turn that he did there? Powerful. He didn't just do it quickly, like, uh, uh, from here to here. By doing a blink turn on this, 
it gives it, it makes it look more visually appealing you don't see the micro jitters and that's why they do it watch again With your birth. from one child to another child this looks more powerful i'm gonna look at my screen now rather than me just staring that way i'm gonna blink but obviously do it quicker Come this looks nicer you... this is gorgeous this is what i love about star wars what i love about it is they make their worlds feel massive and why does this look beautiful look where the lighting is look you get this lovely edge light this rim light yeah because they are backlit. Loads of Star Wars stuff when it looks those powerful shots like this. It's because it's backlit like those, you know, Luke with the sunset going down, the two suns, whatever it is. They're always backlit and that's why they look beautiful. And that slight Star Wars tone, that light motif that's in there. And look at this texture. Look at this texture, yeah? Using these Firefly things. All the polymer that. Look at them. Beautiful. What a great way to, to introduce your characters, but to differentiate them. One white, one black. But it, didn't I? I said, is the black one going to be the dark one and the one in the white not going to be the good, it's going to be the good one. Turned out it wasn't, was it? It was the other way around. They did it on purpose. They tricked me. Also, look at the lighting, yeah? Very heavy contrast. Quite a lot darker than you normally see on these Star Wars ones. Bit of an evolution on this. Really low key lighting. This is a dark story. Beautiful. This fight scene was great. Your privilege is the dirt. His voiceover, the way he says it, your privilege is the dirt. Really interesting. Normally I don't like action sequences this close, but it's fine because we are, we've jump cut. If we jump cut, or did they flash us back into it? What did they do? That was a hard cut. And they did it because they, they don't want to show you the full martial arts. They're showing you just the impact of the face. They keep it here on these twins primarily throughout the whole cinematic. Why do you think they've done that? Because we want, because this is how we show emotion. We want to show them getting pissed off. Yeah, the lightsabers will do the job, but their eyes tell us everything. Because they don't have hair either. Well, they have hair, but very short skinhead hair. So they, haven't got, they don't move it about to show the anger. They've got very little information. Look. He's growling. So that's what made me immediately think, oh, he's got to be the dark one. And then we see the motion. And because they're showing the passing of time in this choreograph choreograph Oh my God, I can't even say anything. <laughs> because they're showing the fight choreography in this manner, they're showing the passing of time very cleverly. Jump. Power. Move. He beat the shit out of all of them. Not just one, a few of them. And that's how you do it. You don't need to see the whole fight sequence. If you want to show someone really badass, you show the whole thing. They did it just to show their evolution of power over a quick narrative time. As in what we've got the duration. This is nice. Powerful. Yeah. Ooh. Look, they put the power to in their hands. So to make it look more epic. If they just grabbed his hand, it wouldn't look as good. Yeah, it'd look quite good with the sound effect. But let's go back five. Sound effect with a smoke, so when you see martial artists kick each other and that, it looks more powerful because they have martial art powder on their feet and hands. See, looks nice because you see the light all pick all this shit up. Gorgeous. Father, are you pleased? I knew from there, I was like, you bastard. As a dad myself, I immediately... It just helps with these things. But what a great way to show... And look, he's going into the darkness, yeah? Immediately tells you they're bathed in light. They're still innocent. And he seems to be okay with it. He's like, yeah. And he's disappointed. That little... See that? This little thing here. This little bit of dust particle. They put that in there to just give you that texture. Foreground, may ground, background, yeah? Gorgeous. Low-key lighting. Very heavy on the contrast. This is a dark Star Wars. This is a dark story. Boom. In the dark. Look at his catchment of the light. So we can see this beautifulness. Technically, there would hardly be any light there. You know, it's round. Well, there's no round orb here, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. They want you to look at his eyes. So when he sets it off, <laughs> he takes his head off. Only ambition. Look, see, look at all this shit. Looks nice, yeah? The light in their eyes. Do this all the time. It's called a catchment. Makes your shots look a little bit more sexier. Darkness. 
And the camera's always moving. And if it's not moving, it's a little shape, then the subjects in it are moving. Look at this, very cinematic. Look at this darkness, wrapped around in darkness. They're foreshadowing their future already. Rather than having all the space walls that you normally get with Star Wars, they're doing it in the dark. Just keeping with that dark tone, that low key lighting. What's that frame rate? It's like they undercranked the camera. I don't know if it's because it's been up res to 4K that it looks a bit a bit dodgy there in the frame rate. Yeah, look, it looks a bit that's motion blur. You wouldn't get that. Gorgeous though, isn't it? Look at this. Look. The layers. Look at the composition. Right side, the air of the third, left side of the third, middle clean. Just filling out layers. Beautiful edge light. Yeah? That's how you make your characters pop. You make them drawn away from the distance. A little bit of edge light here and here. Were they stars or dust particles? Go back five. Have a look, see. No, it's just stars. The only thing I didn't like was this shot here. I've noticed this quite a bit at the moment when, when it comes to more modern cinema. You get your characters here. It, basically, the way they've done that and they've feathered the edge here, it almost looks fake, like he was put in afterwards. Yet, I don't like that because it looks like there's a disconnect between these two. Subjects A and subjects B. There's a disconnect in it. It doesn't look right as in the way the camera is visually. So when the moment I see it, I'm like, hang on, something don't look right there. Where in reality, there would be a lot probably more distance or just frame slightly. So I mean, because they just, they want to really fill up the frame. Technically, I think they'd be further back. But because they've brought it up really close, basically, looking at it, where his eyes are, he's looking more over here. I would have said they've changed this in post. They're like, bring him in closer. Don't worry about his eyes. Leave the animation as it is. Because look, he's not, they're not looking here. The way they're looking, he should be over here somewhere. But they're not. He's looking right over here. I think they've zoomed, taken his own shot and zoomed in and added it in. He was over here somewhere. He's probably underneath this layer. Look at this. Darkness under his eyes. He looks more evil. Yeah, the reason why is because they've got a light over the head. You want your characters to look more evil, more menacing. Shine the light above them, downwards, and it causes bags under the brows. Want more prettier light? Bring the light more down, 45 degree angle, and you get rid of all this shit. You get all the darkness. Then you make your women that you're filming, or men, or whatever it is, you make them look a, bit, a little bit more beautiful. And you can have things called promise as well, filters, soften them up. But with this, yes, yeah, it's all in the lighting. And yet they still got a catchment in there to make it, make us look at him. You swear. I love this shit. This is so good. Again, this is vintage Star Wars, yeah, for me. It's the world. Look, look at the size of this shit. All the ships moving, foreground elements, background, and you got even further. Lovely. The promises you make, they are yours. Camera's slightly shaking to not, not quite replicate his eye movement or what he's seeing, just enough to say, we're going to war. But again, he didn't even look, did he? planting the seeds he's even looking more evil than this one all in the brow all in this section here and here i can tell that and you notice it more because they've got short hair yet yeah, if he was wearing black and he was wearing white i would immediately gone like yep yeah, no worries but they want you that's why they've always got this bastard twin up front yeah because they want you he's the key subject he is just here to show the differences between the two characters Hello. There. Yeah. Setting him up. And like, even just the way they're walking. Yeah, just something about them. This one's screaming evil. Look at this. There's more of this Star Wars. Yeah, look at the layers. Look at this cloud, the haze, all the texture that they're bringing in there. Overcast. They look more softer, don't they, in the light. They're away from their father. Yeah. Even though they're about to go to war, they look more innocent. Because the lighting is allowing them to look more innocent. When they're with the father, all the bags go over their eyes. Look at this shit. Oh my god. See what I mean with the lighting? Look. Heavy on the contrast. That's what low-key lighting is. Yeah, you're emphasizing on the shadows and the contrast of the imagery. Using light pockets to get your viewers to look somewhere. I want to look at their eyes. I want you to look at their eyes, sorry. I'm going to light them up. Flash of lightning. That's what confused me. You see these Sith generals or whatever they're called going down 
And then you see the clones. Who are these guys? You guys have to let me know. You're the lore experts. And look at these colour palettes. What they're doing here. Darkness, yeah. Got greens in there. Look at this. We're going in for, what's this, snow? But look at the sunset. The sun kiss look. The soft sepia on them. It, the lighting rolls off them. Even though these are harsh, dark blacks, they're not, are they? They roll off because of the time of day they're filming. Be it sort of sunset, sunrise, or sunset, the light is softer. During the middle of the day, or a light above, harsh lighting. This is great. That's what made me think that he was evil. Oh my god, he actually is killing a Jedi, isn't he? Do you know what? I didn't even twig that when I first watched it. So they are killing everyone. I should have guessed it from that clone trooper fell. Sorry, they're not clone troopers, are they? They're normal troopers. Dude, and look at the way they film it, yeah? It's all your action. Watch. We've got here 85 mil, 50 mil. Look at this. Beautiful. It's enough to show me something's happened. But, and then you cut to a wide. Show us this expanse of Star Wars world. Normally, also, this sort of told me that they were bad. You normally, I don't know why, but you normally see the whole... When you show Star Wars characters, I've always... I don't know about the Jedi. Are they, they, I don't ever believe they've been on their knees, right? When they do hologram, you know, conversations, telephone calls, whatever, they're always standing up and positive. They don't ever don't go on their knees. With the, the dark side, tend to, and you always, they always show the back as well. Look at him, look. I wonder, it makes me think that he just does what his dad says, but this one, he, this one's almost got his own animal instinct, isn't it? I love it. And again, we're showing the anger. The losses. Little so details. Even though they're not really close, they have to, they can't really go super close with these characters. Normally they would here, but they haven't because it's both of them. Look, it's all in the action. And the camera's shaked as well. It looks like it's filmed on a camera. This is why I love it. And look at her. Look at this power status that she has on screen. Look at this. Shooting up. The camera is tilted. She walks into focus. These fucking ships behind her. Foreground. Mayground. Mm, well, actually, kind of the same level. Mayground, then background. Look at this colour palette. Even when they're on a different planet, the light is diffused, meaning softer. Look at it, the camera's dollying in all this texture. That's why Star Wars always and looks and feels amazing. You feel like you're in a world, a universe. Oh, do you know what? I didn't even realise he lost his arm until I... Because I saw the metal hand later, but I didn't see it here. Do you think they did this because of Star Wars Episode 3? Just to play homage back to uh, Anakin's character. You know, lost the arm on the floor, all this battle scar stuff. Pain you endure. Fade to black, you don't see it. You don't always have to see this stuff. It's same as when you, you're writing or creating books and things like that. Sometimes it's easier to not show it and let your imagination. You hear the scream, the sound effects. You know, go from there. Who's he batting? Who's he elbowing? Wow. Look at these close-ups. And then they keep going back to here. Setting up the scene. They made them look ridiculously powerful by how they've done the choreography. They set us up. They created titans. This is how you create titans. You have a pre-story which shows you the evolution of the characters. That's why I love anime. Anime is the best for this. They build up the momentum. And so when you see them clash, the titans face each other, you're like, oh my god, it's all about momentum. And when darkness finds Look at this framing, yeah? Boom. And when you say darkness finds you, and when darkness finds you, that's mean he finds you, yeah? The voiceover is there as the voice of God. It's just to give you tidbits of information. The visuals will tell us. When the darkness finds you, who do they show on screen? This bastard. Close up of his hand, the sound effect of the lightsaber. It's telling me everything I need to know. The riser. Ooh, look, hear it. 
again, it didn't show us. If you just saw him stab him, it wouldn't have looked as good. But by, by doing it like this and showing us all the emotion in his face, him looking down the barrel lens, breaking the fourth wall, even more powerful. I love it. Let's go back and have fire when I watch that scene again. Because even he's got a burnt out face. Alone. Alone. Look at him. Look, the catchment. There's no catchment from here. The way that lightsaber was, it would be ripped across his eye here. But they didn't. They did just a little ball. Because they, that's all you need. Because they want you to look at that eye. And why break the, and why break the fourth wall? I want you to face the darkness alone and staring straight at you. It's interesting, isn't it? And look, the way he's looking at him. He's not looking at him. He's worried. He's concerned. Brilliant. Brilliant writing. Let the other character, as I said, he's there to support the story of this character and his evolution of becoming this. Well, is he, if he's killing Sith, does that mean he's a Sith Lord? What's he, what is he if he's killing the Sith? A renegade? I don't know. And all the crumbling stuff behind them. They didn't need a fade cut there. They could have just jumped in, but then they may be worried about all the crumbling debris behind. It didn't flow, maybe. That's why they did a crossfade there, I think. Here it is. It's almost like a one-shotter. That's Hollywood. That is. That's her Hollywood movement. Big set pieces, starting close, bring the camera out, show the world, show us the Star Wars universe. This is world building. And look at these widescreen bars. Yeah, it looks, it's in Cinescope. It looks like a movie. If it was full screen, like some of the other cinematics have been, it kind of doesn't look as cinema-esque, should we say? This 235.1 mask really helps. It really does. And shoot it anamorphic as well. It, looks, it supports it even more so. Look at this colour palette. Again, this darkness of the light. It's nice and clean, the lighting, which I love about it. But it does give you these deep shadows, look, these heavy contrasts. But it's still soft, though, isn't it? Look, look at the shadows. Soft, yeah? Nice and rolled off. So if you guys are into cinematography, the softer the light, the more expensive it looks. If you want harsh shadows, shoot in the middle of the day, whatever, if you're outside. Indoors, harsh light. If you want it nice and soft and you've only got the one light source, like a big lamp, Put a bed sheet in front of it if you're doing it cheap. If not, buy some diffuser and you get these nice soft cinematic shadows. Even when it's a low key movement. As in lighting. This fucking close up. Dude, that's a background. Look at that. That's a wallpaper. Sorry. Stunning. He's, I don't understand this bit here. Like, I get it's there. They could have made him a little bit more evil. Maybe they did this character design to... Make sure you can see the difference between him and the other Sith Lords. But look at the layers, yeah? Dark shadows, but it's rolled off beautifully, isn't it? Clean white. A little bit of a highlight. Edge light. Background. Separation. I want to go back into that. That foot, close up of foot moving off. There. What? You could feel it. Look at these deep shadows now. Look. Tells me everything I need to know. He is. He's looking down. Beautifully rolled off here, isn't he? This bastard. You can't even see his eye. You can see there's a little bit of a catchment because I want you to look down over there. Because that is the that little speck is making me look. Oh my god, so good. And this close up. Yeah, it makes it look more powerful. He's looking at his fist. You know, they're pulling focus. Look. Uh, you can see him breathing, the motion. He looks powerful. It's camera status, power status. See? Look at his eyeball. You can tell they've done it purely for catchment, as in they want you to look at his eye. Because look where this light bulb is, yeah? Let's call it a light bulb, the catchment. His eye moves down, and it's kind of semi stays in the same spot, where theoretically it would roll up because his eyes look down. Does that make sense? And the pocket of light would change here. It doesn't. It's fine. It's CGI. You don't have to. But have that catchment in there. It still looks beautiful. And they roll it off. You can't even barely see the catchment now because they want you to look down here. It's unusual. They normally had a little bit more catchment on him, but they didn't. They just want you to kind of, the way they framed him. Interesting. Let's go back five. And the eye just fucking turns, doesn't it? 
And look, you know it's a powerful moment. The camera dollies forward. If you've got a powerful moment in your films or it's doing storyboards or whatever it is that you're doing, even if it's a line of dialogue or just a look like this, bring the camera closer to the subject. Dolly it in. If it was static, it wouldn't look as good. Watch, static. Dolly in. Oh, I, he's lost it, mate. The only thing I didn't like, I want to hear his footsteps. Arr. You can hear it slightly, but not loud enough. I want louder diegetic. Yeah, I want a louder mix. Maybe they did that so it doesn't confuse you a little bit with the score. Mate, he doesn't even look, does he? He was setting this up from the start. They call that a, they call that a speed ramp, by the way. Watch this. Normal speed. <laughs> See that? They call it a speed ramp. You're changing the speed of the footage. I just thought he was like, no! Brother! He didn't even hesitate, did he? At all. This is why this cinematography works and this is, looks way better than a lot of the Star Wars stuff that I've seen. Just look at the lighting. Yeah? As much as I dislike the later Star Wars ones, is it Episode 7? I really enjoyed the cinematography of that one. I thought it was beautiful and it worked with the world that they were building. Look at this. It's again, it's all in the eyes that you can just tell. They set, even though they're twins, I can tell the difference. Just by the framing, got the fucking mask tells you, but just their eyebrows, the way they, he was softer, he was more rounded, the way they lit him, it was softer. And then the light gets softer, doesn't it? Yeah. They change it. They did a really good, what was it? What fucking Star Wars was it? I watched. I think it was the Kenobi series, the way they used the light when Darth Vader was Darth Vader and when it went to sort of blue or whatever it was, you could see that it was Anakin speaking, using light. Same thing here. Watch. Evil, evil, evil. Darkness can barely see him. That's up. Because technically that would be reflecting on there a bit. He lifts up. Softness, yeah, of the light. What have I done? I find it really stupid because I'm just like, have them two as your like sub bosses, you'd be, I mean, badass. To me, I find it a waste. I know that's not the Star Wars way, but I find it a waste. Look at this lovely pedestaling down, wrapping round, and he's there. Look at this demon. Yeah? You've got a catchment here just to give you more pocket of depth rather than just black stars, foreground um, and background. Foreground, back, uh, may ground, background, yeah, that you can see it all. Why put that in? Because it looked empty. You got, they call this negative space. Think about that when you're doing your drawings or anything like that, or you're doing, you know, you're framing your photographs. Look at this, look, he almost looks innocent, doesn't he? Like, Father, what have I done? And finally, Come with me. he praises him. Some but look at the way the camera slightly shakes the sound effects there's another pocket another blue light there to help us separate the backgrounds look at the camera slightly moving Some. music changes fade to black wow and that drone's still going as i said i think for me personally that was probably my favorite so far and we've got another two to go on these bad boys so which i'm really excited to cover him so again, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the breakdown and I'll see you on the next one. See you later. Bye-bye.